characters stand inside. We're actually doing Lord of the Rings. Directors and tiny houses, tiny houses. Houses, remodeling houses. Um, basically. It's not a rather Something that other people call you. I don't call myself as, a cover. As everyone. Okay. A very good evening to you, Maria. How is your day going? Ah, oh, frantic. A uh, lot of things uh, happening. It's uh, three weeks uh, to Salone, so every minute, uh, every second is important. <laughs> Give us a brief of this year's event. What are some of the key themes or focal points that attendees can expect to see? Well, the title of this Salone is Where Design Evolves. So we stress the idea of the evolution uh, because Salone is a place where you discover the new trends, uh, where the companies... Uh, it's, it's, it's the stage that companies uh, choose for presenting the new lines, the new product. And it's also a place where the design community, which is made of uh, um, companies, uh, buyers, uh, contractors, uh, interior designers, and architects, uh, suppliers. So it's a, a big amount of people from all around the world. Where Salon is the place where, where this community um, gather, uh, is gathering together. Um, so what to expect from this Salone, for sure, the possibility to create new connections, interesting connections, uh, but also the cultural uh, value of Salone is uh, uh, more and more important. That's why we organize uh, uh, special events and cultural exhibition inside the, the, the fair pavilions. And this year, the cultural contents will be spread all across Salone. And uh, some highlights uh, are, for example, the installation by a very important movie director, David Lynch. And as the, there is also an exhibition about a uh, bathroom and uh, where is now the industry of the bathroom furniture, uh, also in terms of the sustainability aspects. And then uh, the new pavilion of the kitchen and appliances. Uh, is very interesting uh, for the way it's conceived, uh, but also for um, for the installation that will be inside it. Uh, it will be about uh, the food design. Um, so somehow the installation that we organize are um, presenting the, the the future, the future development of the furniture industry. And speaking of trends, what are the emerging design trends that will be highlighted in the 2024 edition? <laughs> well, you, we have uh, Salone Satellite. Salone Satellite is uh, turning 25 years old this year. It's the space inside Salone dedicated to young designers. And for sure, it's the place where you, uh, where you can see the future because young talents are always uh, uh, stressing a lot uh, the new ideas, uh, new concepts. And uh, of course, uh, the sustainability aspect and the research about uh, new materials and new way to design uh, products in, in, in order to make them more sustainable uh, is a very important uh, trend. Uh, at the same time, uh, like uh, all the aspects uh, related to the outdoor furniture are more and more important. And now we have kitchens for outdoor, not only seatings or or chairs or uh, tables. So also, I think that we will see a lot of outdoor this year and new ideas uh, to uh, create uh, nice uh, places um, on the open air. Since you brought sustainability into the conversation, how is Salon del Mobile promoting sustainability initiatives in 2024? And what steps are being taken to encourage exhibitors and attendees to embrace eco-friendly practices? Well, because Salone is the most important uh, stage uh, for the contemporary uh, furniture industry, um, sustainability is one of the main uh, aspects that uh, a company, a brand, has to consider uh, in a very serious way, um, also in terms of reputation. Uh, it's for the same reason that Salone is embracing the challenge of sustainability. Uh, we are part of the Global Compact uh, since uh, two years ago and we received last year the certification, the European Certification for Sustainable Events um, and the Salone 2023 has been certified and the same will be the Salone 2024. And to get this kind of certification you have to assure to have uh, um, a strong commitment towards sustainability, uh, both in terms of the way you realize uh, all the installations, including the kind of materials that you use, uh, 
the fact that you reassure that uh, your installation can be reused and uh, can be repaired, can last for years, uh, but also uh, it's including the social aspect, um, how your employees are treated, what are the working shifts, uh, um, this year, we, all, we are also introducing um, a food waste management system. Uh, so the waste uh, food at the end of the day will be given to uh, different um, activities for the city. Uh, so it's a 360, 360 degrees approach um, that we share with the main stakeholders. Um, more than the other with the exhibitors and uh, the companies that are re realizing the different installations. So for us, it's a very important commitment uh, that we want to uh, embrace uh, in a very serious way, um, ensuring uh, a constant uh, evolution and constant improvement uh, that we test with the auditors every year, year by year. Since you already mentioned that you are looking forward to David Lynch installations, what are the your, what are the favorite aspects of 2024 Salon del Mobile that you're particularly excited about? <laughs> you know, um, you have to remember that I'm, I'm also an exhibitor, and uh, like every exhibitor, uh, since the very last second, the last minute. Uh, uh, when you open the door of your uh, space, uh, you don't know. You don't know how it will look like. So it's this um, incredible um, expectation that so is always uh, arising, no? more and more, more and more, more and more. And you have seen the projects, you have shared the sketches, you have seen the materials, you have seen the prototypes and everything, but then the synesthetic uh, moment when uh, all the senses are involved it's only it's only the day when uh, the door is open uh, so what do i expect uh, like every exhibitor first uh, my space <laughs> i want to see it finished <laughs> and also i expect with um, with a lot of emotion the reaction of the visitors and this is very important to see the faces uh, and the different reactions you know, in recent time, there has been a significant increase in Indian designers exhibiting their work at Salon Satellite. What further efforts are being made to increase that number and also ensure that it is it ultimately leads to high footfall considering how big the Indian market is? Well, you know, all the work that we have done this year uh, with the roadshow, uh, including the visit that we pay in New Delhi, uh, is very important. We have been traveling all around the world promoting Salone del Mobile and Salone Satellite. Uh, we started from Shanghai, then we went uh, all across Europe. We have been in the United States, then we have been, of course, in India. I just came back from Japan and Korea. So the promotion of Salone towards um, journalists, but also um, the Association of the Interior Designers and schools um, this year was very, very important, more than ever. And I think we think that this promotion is helping a lot also the participation of uh, young designers uh, to, to Satellite. So we are um, willing to uh, go ahead in this uh, promotion uh, initiatives uh, because it's a way also to exchange ideas uh, directly on site. Um, so I think that this is one of the main uh, tools. Looking ahead, what are your aspirations for the future Salon del Mobile? Are there any long-term goals or visions that you aim to achieve through the event before the 2024-25 edition? Well, you know, this uh, combination of uh, uh, business, trade and uh, cultural aspect, um, I think it's, uh, it's a very, 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 very important, more and more. Um, so it's connected to the the DNA of Salone del Mobile, which is uh, more than anything else, uh, it's a place uh, for uh, creating new connections, uh, high level connections, uh, and to develop new projects. So the cultural aspects, which are the main driver of what happened at Salone, together with the um, business aspect. So this combination is the added value of Salone and what uh, makes it different compared to any other 
uh, event in the world. So the, the, my goal in the future is to really um, become more and more and more the point of reference for both those aspects, business and culture. We also have two important uh, exhibitions at Salon. One is Euro Kachina and one is uh, Euro Lace. But these are banale events. Can we expect to have these two events same time around in the near future? You mean the lighting uh, and yeah, the, the lighting and, and the bath? Yes. Uh, is there a plan no. for it? <laughs> you know, actually, this um, uh, this idea of the Biennale is strictly connected to the time that companies need to develop new products. So, to develop a new kitchen, you need two years, and the same All for right. light, which is strictly connection connected to um, technology. That's why we have the Biennale, and it's in respect of the needs of the exhibitors. So I don't see in the near future a, you know, I a moment. Yes, but who knows? <laughs> you know, Maria, legacies are hard to endure. Being a descendant of a notable furniture producing clan in Italy, how difficult is it to live up to the expectations of the public? How do you maintain a balance between being the president of Salon del Mobile and being the head of marketing at communication at Poro SPA? I guess you're also doing that role as well. Yes, of course, but uh, I think uh, um, one of the main reasons because I am now in this uh, position uh, is because of the heritage and the consistency of my company, uh, which I really respect. Um, and um, I think it's very interesting, the governance of Salone. So the governance of Salone is um, founded on the idea that Salone is owned by the exhibitors. Uh, and uh, the president of Salone is always uh, an exhibitor and uh, an entrepreneur. Um, and this is because the Salone has to respect uh, the furniture sector and Salone has as main goal to fulfill the expectation and the needs of the company or the product, um, yes, of the, you know, the different companies that are exhibiting. And this is very important because Salone, uh, Salone, role is not to, you know to earn more and more money year by year but is to give back to, to the furniture sector more and more year by year so i know that if i um i represent this role in a good way is uh, for the entire uh, furniture industry and so i'm also affecting uh, uh, my company and uh, my company has uh, an international network thanks uh, to Salone. And Salone is Salone thanks to the effort that uh, every company, uh, including mine, um, uh, the effort that every company put in creating something new, something amazing every year. Um, so it's in these uh, interconnections that uh, uh, I think uh, is hidden uh, the secret uh, of the success uh, of Salone del Mobile. So I feel honored to be in this uh, role. Um, and I have to thank, uh, first of all, uh, my company for four generation of uh, the Porro family. <laughs> you know, people see your success today, but they don't see the struggle behind it. What are some of the struggle stories that you have to share that you can share with us while working as the president of Salon Del Mobile or as a set designer? Has there been any make or break moment in your life when you really felt low and how did you overcome it? Oh, yes. Uh, so I was um, I was making this uh, display uh, in Manaus in Brazil in the middle of the forest. And I was working for months uh, from here for Italy to design all the sets. It was very complicated. It was a Tristan who dissolved. Um, and all the singers were coming from Vienna. The orchestra was playing. The prime minister of Brazil was supposed to come. So it was very, very important. And then the, what, what even arrived, was What even it was a Tristan und dissolved. It's an opera. All right. And I was I was working as an assistant to the director and the set designer and costume designer, so I was supervising everything. Then when we arrived in Manaus, uh, nothing was ready. They haven't built uh, nothing. 
they didn't build uh, the set, the costumes were not ready, nothing was ready. And so there was a big fight be between the director and uh, the organizers. And you know, I was the assistant, so I was going all around trying to fix, and then we weren't able to fix, and we had to come back. And that was, uh, for me, the fact that we work, I work, day and night, for months, to prepare something that never happened, was such a delusion. I was very young, I was in my 20s. Um, but at the same time, I did everything that was in my power, but I was not the, the boss, so I couldn't really <laughs> make it work. So I promise myself, if I will never be in the same situation, I will not behave like that, like the boss will be behaving like, I will make it work. Because after one year of preparation, uh, you have to make it work. Um, and this is the worst uh, delusion I had in my career, but I learned a lot. Uh, so coming back from Brazil, from the forest, uh, with all the opera singer from Vienna and all those people. Um, it was a big delusion, but something I learned a lot. So, other than work, what's a typical day in Maria Poro's life? What does Maria Poro do when she's not engaged in a meeting or when she's not doing something for the Salon <laughs> movie? Does she like to cook, <laughs> read books, watch movies? How does Maria Poro spend her day? Ah, look, I have three kids, so I play with them, I cook for them, uh, I enjoy my private life, friends, everybody does, and uh, see, I do normal things. <laughs> yes, I cook, I look, I like to do, I love flowers and gardening, so when I have time to take care of the garden, which is, this, that is a thing that I like to do also with my kids connecting with nature. Uh, yeah, and then I love theater, I like to go to theater, I love art, so if there's an art exhibition, even if I'm working somewhere in the world, I will start try to find some uh, minutes, hour to, to enter a museum. Uh, um, like everybody, uh, I'm a normal person. And you know, <laughs> being, being the president of such a global event can be challenging at times. Uh, and it can be hard at times, both on the body and on the mind. How do you how do you keep yourself refreshed? Yeah, it's uh, it's hard. It's hard to keep myself refreshed, really, to find the uh, minutes, uh, hours, uh, just to be quiet. Of course, reading a nice book for me it's a way to refresh. Again, going uh, into you know having a walk with the dog uh, and my kids. Uh, in the forest, uh, for me, is refreshing uh, a lot. Um, yes, this kind of thing, uh, quiet thing, uh, I really appreciate. Especially when there's a pressure, big pressure, like uh, in the month before Salone. So now it's Easter time, I'm going to my mother's house and, uh, and the mountains around Modena and for sure I will enjoy some nice food, uh, nice walks, uh, maybe going to the river and just uh, playing with rocks with my kids near the river. That is refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maria. It was really a pleasure to have you with Home Crux today. And I know we are actually running out on time. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd really like to thank you for uh, saving some time on Home Crux and being a part of Home Crux. I'd wish you all the very best for the Salon Del Mobile 2024 edition. And I was telling Patricia and Julia as well that I would like to host the entire team of uh, Salon Del Mobile to India someday. Oh, please. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Bye. 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 Grazie. I can hear you, but I can't see you. You cannot see. see. No. Did you close your eyes? No, no. I didn't close my eyes. I'm able to see you. Speaking, I was not expecting to see you because I thought it, you're like three minutes late. I am not sure if I'm <laughs> sure or not. I know. I have, I have a habit of being just always late someone catches me and so i was scrambling to find the link and get set up so <laughs> and the other room is too noisy hang on let me just turn that light off one second that's better
Yeah, it's better now. So, how's the day going? It's afternoon here in India. How's the uh, weather in England at the moment? It's raining. <laughs> it's raining? Yeah, yeah. All right, then. It's... I'll just give you a brief introduction of who I am and what I do. I okay. am... You can just adjust the camera and whenever you want me to start, I can begin. <laughs>